hello, Glamour Ghouls. My name is Pinup Palmer, and I like to keep everything pink and spooky. And for today, we are doing something very spooky indeed. Oh, isn't it exciting? If you haven't already guessed it, yes, I am here at the Winchester Mystery House. Four thousand square feet. A mysterious Victorian mansion resides in San Jose, California. Its bizarre architecture caught the eye of 12 million guests since opening its doors to the public in 1923. But it's not just the home that brings curiosity to tourists. It's the stories. The ghost stories. <laughs> You see, before it became a historic landmark, it was once a home to a widow named Sarah Lockwood Pardee Winchester. And Sarah lived in Connecticut with her husband, William Winchester, a man to the family fortune of the Winchester Repeating Rifles, the gun that is said to have won the West. And tragedy struck Sarah. Her infant daughter, Annie, died of childhood illness, and soon after, her husband, William, passed away from tuberculosis, leaving Sarah a widow to the Winchester fortune. Now, why did Sarah decide to leave New Haven, Connecticut? Well, you can blame it on the Victorians with their obsession with the dead. You see, in the Victorian age, there was a boom of spiritualism. People died of early age, war, famine, or as simple as having a dress dyed green. And the only way to get that color back then was to load it up with arsenic. And their loved ones did anything to try and reconnect with them. So, seances were born, and psychics were on every corner. Is that you, my dear? Yes, darling. Sarah was a very superstitious woman and had many psychic readings. The rumor goes that Sarah was told by a psychic to move out west to escape the spirits killed by the Winchester rifles. So, with no time wasted, she packed up her things and bought a small farmhouse in Northern California. And that eight-bedroom farmhouse will soon be turned into a massive mansion with a never-ending expansion until Sarah's death in 1922. Sarah, now leaving behind a home consisting of 160 rooms, 52 skylights, 47 stairways and fireplaces, 17 chimneys, 13 bathrooms, and 6 kitchens. That's a lot of food. I'm starving. All built at the price tag of $5 million in 1923, or $71 million today. Wow, well, that's a lot of money. Sarah was said to be brilliant in architecture, even though she might have had some help with her designs. The story goes, around 12 o'clock every night, Sarah would go into her seance room and start communicating to the good spirits on how to confuse the bad spirits in her home. Sarah never had contractors to design her home. She apparently had two at the beginning, but shortly fired them and started drawing up plans of her own. She would have stairs leading to nowhere, doors open into the kitchen or outside, and rooms with 13 windows or artifacts to ward off evil spirits. People believe the ghosts of the home still lurk inside the Winchester mansion walls, bringing believers and skeptics such as Harry Houdini, who at this time was sick of fake paranormal psychics and what he claimed as false spiritualism. Since he knew all the illusions himself, he went on tour for 34 years debunking fake mediums. Houdini, however, did visit the Winchester mansion in 1924. Apparently, he left with more questions than answers, thus pushing the curiosity of people around the world to come and experience the Winchester for themselves. Are the spirits still haunting the Winchester mansion? Well, fortunately, today, I think I get to find out. I am here with my ghoul pal Liz, and we are shooting with the Oblong Box Shop, who has made a clothing collab with the Winchester house for their 100th anniversary. Liz and I got to explore the grounds of the Winchester house and found out some possible ghost stories and sightings from the employees who work here today. So, Sarah was a very kind woman because a lot of her workers that worked on her house till her death, actually she built houses for them here to live with their families so that they can always work on her house and always stay close by because, I mean, it was really a never-ending project. I'm tired of this, Grandpa! That's too damn bad! If I am correct, I think these pillars have been here since the beginning, and this originally was the front gate where Sarah would come in her carriage to get close to her house. 
but I don't think anybody uses this driveway anymore. They use a side driveway over there, so not as fun. Now, if I am correct, I forget the date on this, but the big quake that happened in San Francisco, it affected everything in Northern California, and it also affected the Winchester house. Now, the Winchester house used to be seven stories tall, so if you could just imagine already this gigantic building that we're looking at, it had a couple more stories added on top of it. And when the giant earthquake hit, it collapsed on top of itself. Another big damage that was done here is over here. And as you can see, they boarded it up way over here, but this entire wall here crumbled to the floor. It was so sad to look at. I'm sure I could find a picture somewhere, but you could see the remnants of what used to be here, this beautiful brick. Uh, kind of circular cone looking thing. <laughs> I'm not sure really what to call it. I'm not good at architecture. We know! But you can see the remnants of what was left here. This whole thing crumbled. Instead of just fixing it and rebuilding it, she just decided to close up a couple things, uh, close up a couple doors and a couple rooms and just never talk about it again. And it was never revisited after her death. However, there are very interesting things in this house, just like this. If you look up right up there, you can see it says the door to nowhere. Yes, that is right. There is a door inside the Winchester house that literally walks out, I would say, maybe to your death. Oh, the tank house. And here is Arthur Miller, no relation to the guy who married uh, Marilyn. That's too bad. But yeah, this is apparently is his house and there's a creepy light bulb just going on and it stopped as soon as we did that. That's not weird. That's not weird at all. <laughs> oh, it's back on. Oh, okay. And here is another house, the foreman's house, right over here, a cute little Victorian red home. He was another man that worked here for Miss Winchester, fruit drying shed. She had her own little farm going on here. And look at this, it's a little cart. I feel like I'm watching uh, the Wolfman looking at this thing. You've been a long while coming. I'm not buying anything. And I am not selling anything. The curse is real. The curse is real, Liz. Oh no, is it a full moon? Oh, I think it's actually, it was, it was the third, yes. right? Yep. After walking around the Winchester grounds, we met a fellow Winchester employee. This is Joe. Joe has worked here since last July. And Joe has some pretty interesting stories. Joe, please tell us, what is the scariest or weirdest thing you've ever seen here? A uh, shadow figure. Ooh. Upstairs, um, went to go put away my radio one time on Halloween night. Uh, it was like 12 o'clock, I was the last one here. I went to go put up my radio. Um, I looked to my right hand side and I had seen a shadow figure sort of pop up behind the door just like this. Oh, hell no. I've heard footsteps up there. Um, I see a little shadow dog out here. I've had shadow my, dog? Yeah, I've Aww. had my name called. Um, at Boom. like one o'clock in the afternoon, inside by the front door. It's Absolutely like, not. Joseph. I felt so the they wind, know you, everything. They know your name. Yeah, oh, they, they say know. that the house listens. That's I believe say. that. It's like a breathing entity mm -hmm. itself. Just too, I could send you pictures as well. Uh, please yeah. do. Please, please oh do. Are we about to get some evidence? My God. Zach Baggins, eat your heart out. Glows like a butterfly. And when we. What are you. <laughs> oh, oh. oh you so, oh, does that oh. not look like a hat of the worker? Oh that's my gosh. It looks like the upper half, like he's just looking yeah. down. Where was that taken? In the basement, I believe, towards the, uh, uh, like the third floor, towards the um, elevator, right okay, behind okay. the elevator shaft. Could this be the wheelbarrow man that many people have seen in the basement? Or a worker who used to build the mansion himself? But wait. Joey says there's more. This one another guest took. They were taking photos of themselves. Mm -hmm. And then... <gasps> Shut up! Listen to the beginning of this. And uh, in the beginning, you'll hear what sounds like a growl. That's a growl. It's definitely hot. It's just during any time of the day. Any time. Great. Yeah. Bye, Joe. Bye. Have, a good Bye. Day. Have fun with axe throwing. <laughs> After meeting Joe, he really got me thinking. While we were shooting inside the mansion, did I happen to catch anything on camera? 
We were so busy working, I didn't think of the possibility of catching anything. Now that I think of it, I would like something personal to confirm my feelings on the Winchester house. And in order to do that, we have to go back in time. May I have your attention? God. The mansion toward 11 o'clock is departing outside in the courtyard. The mansion toward 11 o'clock is departing outside in the courtyard. Well, it looks like it's time for us to go. got 30 minutes I got what like two hours yeah was I really asleep though if you no this is doing the final touches on my hair Apple? Yes, yes. it's too early for that shit yes. <laughs> no we're at the stop sign yeah we're just going to circle oh I don't know that's a magic view. Did you hear that? Because I did. So this is for all the skeptics out here. I am just uploading videos now into it. I haven't even edited anything. It's all completely raw. So this EVP, I think, happens right when we walk in for the first time around 5.30 in the morning at the Winchester house. And I'm just taking like B-roll and footage and stuff like that. And I'm letting this one flow right here on the staircase. And I notice my voice peaks about here. But if you notice right here in this area, you actually could see a little bump in sound but right as it soon hits this clip you will hear a whisper of a woman and i as cliche as it sounds it does sound like she says get out whatever you need to do bam right there get out whatever you need to do 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 i was so happy to catch my very own evp in the house and who knows what other mysteries we will find throughout the day. The house is like a maze, leading you different directions, not knowing where it's taking you. Here, a lovely portrait painting of hers. Isn't that gorgeous? She cute. And then there's a coffin right there. <laughs> After some scouting, we finally found our first shooting location. The funeral area. How fitting. Just like that, we are on to our next location, Sarah's room. So yeah, 
she did uh, I know, yeah, she did die in this room. Ew, gross. Next up is one of my favorite rooms in the house, the green room, or the sun room. This is where one of the trap doors is located. It seems there are secrets still hidden in the Winchester home, but the house is fickle and will only reveal things when it wants to. How lucky it must be to be chosen when the house calls to reveal itself and its secrets to you. So they said this furniture here is not original to the Winchester house. They said they bought a lot of this furniture up in Oregon or it's been donated by other places, but it is original 1800s Victorian furniture that you see in this room. But is it from the Winchester house? Maybe not. When they finally sold the house and all the furniture was moved out, they never labeled anything. So who knows where Sarah Winchester's furniture is at? For all we know, it could be in your home, and you may never know. Go for it. It's the Russian. Okay. Ooh. It's a wall. All right. What's behind door number two? Another safe. And then there is the safe. But wait, there's more. Another safe. Another safe. <laughs> And then and this one. And this is there the we last. go. This and then the, the last this one. Inside of this. And what you think would be in there is tons of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Jones. no. <laughs> what was in there? So it was the two obituaries for her husband, her daughter, and a lock of her daughter's hair. That's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> People would be like, meh. Where is our money? And when did they find this door again? What? So this door was found um, in 1923 when a gentleman purchased the house, which is now the Winchester Mystery House. Right. Um, so all of these were locked. So it took like months to get all of these open for them wow. to finally open the final safe. To find a <laughs> so, hair and obituaries. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what a find though, exactly. huh? Look at that. Who knows what other hidden gems are here, hidden in Sarah Winchester's house. I'm sure there is. I'm, I'm sure, sure there's so still things. Sure. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that no one truly has the full story of Sarah Winchester? I wish these walls could talk. Well, I guess they kind of did earlier from our EVP. I digress. But you kind of have to admit, it is pretty fascinating. Moving on to one of the spookiest rooms in the home. But be careful, this part of the wing still has damage from the 1906 earthquake. And you could see the damage all along these walls. But hidden in the back is one of the seance rooms. Let's see if we can conjure up some spirits. Here we are in the seance room. Got a nice old original Ouija board in here. And look at that, the planchette. Ringing the bell always sounds like a fun idea, until it actually works.
not everything needs to be so scary at the Winchester house. Because now it's time to change into our cute day clothes and hats and try to keep in good spirits. Get it? The Oblon box shop really put in the work when it came to designing the clothes for the mystery house. They have loungewear, to shirts, sweaters, hats, skirts, and of course, the purses. You can't forget the purses. And Liz and I were very excited to shoot all of it. touch it. Here is one of the most infamous rooms, or should I say stairs, at the Winchester house. These are the stairs that lead to nowhere. And it's true, they really lead to nowhere. Look, it goes nowhere. <laughs> Tight squeeze. It's a baby doll thing. What is this doing here? Ew. Do I leave it? Do I take yeah, it? Yeah, no, leave it. Ew. Okay. Ew. Leave it. There we go. <laughs> Now I have no idea why a little baby doll would be on the stairs that lead to nowhere. It was a real mystery. It's how tall. Sarah Winchester was. She's itty bitty. I think we have a picture of Liz as comparison. Liz, how tall are you? 5'11. Five 5'11. Five, uh huh, 5'11. Five 5'11. Five I'm about 5'6, so I'm somewhere over here, so I'm still taller than her. <laughs> Stained glass windows are one of the shining stars in the Winchester. And the Oblong shop didn't miss a beat by putting them as a purse. Isn't it darling? Yes, it is. Meanwhile, Liz and I are getting ready to do some pictures below and above. The fact that I got to hang out of the door to nowhere just like this 1950s photo seen here is just unbelievable. And of course, it didn't take Liz long to want what I had. She eventually got her way. Just like that, it's over. Our time at the Winchester is here. It was truly a magical experience. Like Houdini, I'm left with a lot of questions. A hundred years this home has been celebrated. Who knows what kind of secrets the house will reveal over time? And will we ever get the full story of the Winchester? Who knows? I guess that's why they call it a mystery. Looking for more pink and spooky content? Don't look any further. Just click the links. And don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you ghouls on the other side.